It's fun to talk all highfalutin about the uh, uniqueness and completeness theorem and to think about these boundary conditions that we need, but now we've got to figure out how to really use them if we're going to describe this pulse going down the string. So we could do this, and there's some foreshadowing. We could do this. We could say that the boundary conditions, if we add up a bunch of these sinusoidal solutions, but our initial guess, remember, was just a sine um, kx plus phi. Right, k, or we'll, we'll go ahead and, you know, each one has its own n, right, because we're doing an infinite sum. Our initial guess was it was sinusoidal, because when we plugged it into the wave equation, we said that uh, this f of x must obey the oscillator equation. So we said it has some shape like that, and now we're going to say, let's let it oscillate at the corresponding frequency. Okay. So the question is, how do we add in the velocity part? Right, this is basically kind of just saying, let's let all the normal modes oscillate. But one way to make them oscillate might be to get them, let them oscillate out of phase, one way to give them different information. So maybe uh, if the pulse is going this way, all the normal modes would be out of phase in one manner, and if the pulse is going this way, they'd be out of phase in another manner. So maybe the solution is to add a phase lag there as well. So we could take a solution like that and start applying boundary conditions, and we know from our previous work basically that if you clamp the left, since it's a sign, we described it with a sign that tells you that the phi ends are equal to zero. So that's good. And when we clamped it on the right, that's what gave us the discrete frequencies. Right? That tells us that there are discrete normal modes. And that's what we end up using in the sum. We end up summing up those normal modes. Um, the shape we've already worked with, the shape tells us the, oops, ANs that I forgot to write down. Because that's the initial, like cosine zero, that's the initial shape that we described. So maybe we use the velocity y dot, um, the initial velocity, x zero, to get the dNs. But that's hard. Right? We don't want to do that. This is not the way to do it. Let me show you. Um, this may be sort of the intuitive way, where we haven't used the velocity yet, the velocities yet. This is the one place we can add another constant, so let's stick it there. That, the way we've developed it, that looks like what you might want to do, but that's not what you want to do. Let me show you something better. 